Good morning, everyone. Uh, got a few more calls here today. This is our Chevrolet dealership here in Bergal. Of course, we have a Mahindra tractor dealer. Because this is the country. We have a few different calls today. I don't know how much filming I'll be able to do, but I know the first one is I'm just injecting some dye, so I may not film that. Uh, the second one is going to be a system check. And I don't know if I'll get to the third one or not, because I have some other things I have to do. And I know tomorrow we got to check a couple uh, rooftop units. Uh, I changed the compressor on one of them a couple days ago, or yesterday morning. And uh, a couple of other ones I noticed didn't run the whole time I was there. And I was there for a few hours. And uh, they said, yeah, they never work. And I said, well, you want to fix them? And they said, yeah, so I'm going to go back there and see if I can fix them. It'll be tomorrow, and then I'll check out this die tomorrow, and hopefully uh, tomorrow or the next day. Let's see if I can't find where this evaporator is leaking. I'm gonna guess. Uh, this is a Goodman unit from about three or four years ago, so there's a chance the evaporator has gone bad. I couldn't find it with an electronic leak detector, so we're going with that. So stay tuned. We have a Goodman package unit that has a leak. We're gonna use the Spectro side, Spectro line, sorry, Spectro line die kit to find the leak. Now there's my new tool bag with all my gadgets in it and it seems like they fit a lot better. So far I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna get down to get this die ready. I'm going to screw the handle onto the actual die cylinder. Take the top off. Put the hose on. This keeps the hose on the end open. Force the die up through the hose. Make sure a little bit comes out there. Make sure the entire hose is die only. And then we take the uh, little piece out of the end that we can inject it into the system. It's all hooked up to the system. The system just came on and I'm going to slowly inject this dye into the system on the low side and then give it a probably a couple days and come back and see if we can find that uh, leak. We are now going to our second call. Uh, this is just a system check on two I I think they're 15 seer Goodman systems, 14 or 15 seer Goodman systems from about five years ago. I'm not positive, but we'll see here in a moment. I've got a Goodman AEPF variable speed air handler 4260, handling from three and a half tons to five tons. And got some buildup in the pan here, <clears throat> rust. And if I take the flood switch off, you can see it's pretty nasty down in there. I'm about to blow that out. And uh, probably water coming down from inside the unit where this thing got plugged up. Uh, in this situation, I can use the Diversitech Gallows, or Gallo Guns, Gallows, sorry. Gallo Gun, uh, CO2 gun to blast the drain clear. Uh, I just carry this with me because it's a little bit more handy than carrying around a nitrogen bottle or something like that. So it actually fits inside this larger opening all the way down there to the P-trap and I can blast it out clear the way for the drain. Uh, the first thing you do is unscrew this handle. The second thing is you put the CO2 cartridge inside of here then you screw this together here and it taps into it and you hit the trigger to fire CO2. I'm going to go ahead and fire another one. Looks like it cleared it out pretty good. Getting cold too. A lot clearer than before. We also need to go ahead and wrap this TXV so it won't sweat because that's where some of this stuff is coming from. So go ahead and get that done too. Okay I'm gonna fill the drain trap back up. So I've noticed on a lot of these things that uh, especially these Goodman air handlers like this if you don't do that the, the force drawing through the trap is so strong 
it almost won't let the drain drain properly uh, until the end of the cycle. So I'll go ahead and plug that P-trap up with water. We good. Well, this is another uh, air handler AEP F1830 variable speed. It just kicked on here, ramping up. There's two sets of wires coming out of this. One for the thermostat, one for the condenser. Uh, the purpose of that is that unlike like a fixed speed motor, this ECM module has to know what setting it's on. It has to know the compressor's calling, the reversing valve's calling, the heat strips are calling, because it changes speeds based on what mode it's in. So the only way for it to know that is to pass through the board. Uh, you can't bypass it by you know going yellow from the thermostat all the way to yellow from the uh, condenser, just passing right across here. And, the air handler has to know what setting you're in so the ECM module knows uh, the correct speed for the blower motor. You hear it rolling in the fridge are rolling through there. TXV inside of the factory insulated case. So we're going to head outside and take a look out there. This is the Goodman uh, heat pump. Hey, see, it looks pretty good. It's five years old, even though this is the waterway. So, uh, a few miles from the beach doesn't make a difference. These look pretty good, and they're not east facing. They're more of a southeast facing uh, orientation, south southeast, so it's a little bit easier on them than if it was east facing at the beach. So, we're about to take some amperages here of the compressor and the fan first. We have 4.4 on the compressor and 0.5 on the fan. Let's see what that stacks up as far as down here. Let's see we have rain load amps of 9, so we're well below that. And rain load amps on the fan is 0.6, so we're well below that. So we're good to go. Okay, we're checking our capacitor here. It is a 30 slash 5 right here. And we are at 27.4, which is real close to, actually it's a little bit out of range. Let me let that one go. It's right on the cusp of being too weak. We'll check the other side, see what it is. This one's uh, good. It's 5 on the fan side. Okay, we want to see if our capacitor is out of range at 27.4 microfarads out of 30. So if we take 100, which is 100% divided by 30, it gives us 3.33. So we'll multiply that by 2.6, which is how deficient the capacitor was. It was supposed to be 30, and it was 27.4, the last reading. So we'll see what that equals. 8.6% deficient. So we'll go ahead and change it out. Plus, I was noticing anyway, it's under warranty, so it'd be a shame with two months left under warranty not to change it out, since it is actually meeting the criteria of failed. Okay, our pressure's were a little off, our superheat's were a little low, our subcooling's low. So I adjusted the TXV, I'm going to adjust it again. We started off at a pressure of 80, or 80, 81 or so, and now we're down to 76, but the superheat is still low. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up a few more times so we can get it down to around 70. See if that superheat comes up a little bit. Okay, here's our TXV. We're going to take the cap off so we can adjust it. We put a wrench on this, service wrench or just a regular wrench. Uh, tighten it to reduce the amount of refrigerant going into the coil and loosen it to increase the amount of refrigerant going into the coil. Our superheat is too low, so we're going to tighten it a couple turns and see how that affects the superheat outside. Okay, I gave it a few turns, and I'm going to go outside and see how it affected uh, the performance. Okay, our sub come all the way up to 6.5 or so, and then come back down, up, and the superheat's heading back down again, so I'm kind of curious where it's going to end up this time. 
uh, trying to find a best spot here that TX3 can work with. Uh, wasn't doing too well to begin with, but we're trying to kind of get it tuned in where it needs to be or as close as possible. So we'll see where this ends up. It's coming back down again, so we'll check and see. Okay, that right there is about perfect. So if it stays in this area, I'll be a happy camper. Looks like it's leveling out here, kind of going up and down with the superheat a little bit, but staying right in the area. Subcooling is a lot better. And uh, this is all from adjusting TXV, not charging at all, not taking away charge, but just using the TXV uh, to kind of compensate for maybe not being set correctly. Or, uh, I mean, the TXV can be failing. Uh, but it looks like it just wasn't set correctly. We brought it back to correct. So I got the other unit started now. Just using my little gauges here, and I'll kind of do it manually on this one uh, because I was already working on the other one. But it looks like we are at around 75 to 80 or 81 or so, and then over here we're at 195-ish, so or 190. So we'll see if this one needs any adjustment. Hopefully not, because it's in the attic. Be done. Well, I was off to look at one of my jobs, see if it was ready for inspection, and uh, to go pay a couple of my accounts since it's the tenth of the month. But uh, I don't know if I want to go to that job. It looks kind of rough out here today. Uh, I don't think we'll be doing any more video in today. I'll see you guys on the next one. Okay, we're back at our Goodman unit, and I'm looking for that leak. Uh, after I injected the dye, I have my little gray tarp there I'm going to put over everything so I can check things out. I've already gone through it a little bit. Uh, so whenever I find something nice, I will show you guys what it looks like. And hopefully we do find something nice. Okay, I have my leak detector here. It's on high right now, but it was on medium and high when I found this one. Now, this is the back side of the evaporator coil. Yeah, that's it, it's leaking. One more time for good measure. All right. Wait a second, maybe that was wrong. Okay, hold on a second. You know, four out of four could be wrong, let's try for five. Okay. Warranty.